Hey YouTube Fredcom, welcome to another episode of On The Radar, this time my niche edition for January 2016. If you haven't checked out my designer list for this month, I posted it last week so go check that one out. Um, obviously this uh, video idea is all about what's on my radar as fragrances are concerned for this particular month. What excites me? What do I want to sniff out? Um, so let's take a look at my niche edition here today. Let's start this one off with one I think is going to be a beaut. This is from the house of Guedelin and this is an Ombre Gris based fragrance. Now this one called Ombre Eternel. Now this is a brand new release from the house of Guedelin. Um, now when Guedelin makes a particular fragrance on a specific note, I always, um, they always get my attention just because Guedelin just does it a step above uh, any other fragrance house. And they're doing a fragrance with the primary note of Ombre Gris. Now Ombre Gris, you may know, a lot of the fragrance heads know, Ombre Gris is always tagged with creeds. Um, this is probably going to be on another level. Um, so I'm very excited to get my nose on this one. Um, Guedelin has a press release on this particular fragrance saying Ombre Gris and Incense are the main culprits here, the primary notes in this particular fragrance. Um, this is something I have to sniff just because Ombre Gris is a very highly expensive and beautiful note. This is something that I'm really excited to sniff out. Um, I really think that Guedelin may just have a jewel on their hands right here and I gotta get my, my, my little paws on it. <laughs> now the hype for me personally on this particular fragrance is actually really really high. I'm very excited to see uh, what Guedelin can do with Ombre Gris and uh, this one I have to get my nose on it and the bottle's actually pretty gorgeous so at number 10 Ombre Eternel. At number 9 um, it is from the house of Cartier. Um, this is from their higher end line. Um, this one called Oud Radieux. Now Cartier has this actually this line that they released um, that are all kind of Oud based. This one Oud Radieux is a newer release from the brand 2015 I believe was the release date. Very simple, no breakdown. Oud, pepper, and ginger. Mathilde Laurent is the nose behind this uh, particular fragrance. Uh, Mathilde actually has done uh, basically a lot of recent Cartiers, and obviously including my favorite from the brand, uh, Roadster. I can't wait to see what Oud Radieux uh, smells like. Now number eight from the house of Yves Saint Laurent, this one called Tuxedo. Now this is a newly released uh, fragrance from YSL and it's uh, from their luxury line. Now again, Cartier, YSL, you're gonna say, hey Mark, those are designer brand, what gives? Well for me, if the price range is very high or your boutique only fragrances, I go, I classify you as niche just because a lot of niche fragrances, it's all about pricing and being exclusive. These fragrances, not your regular Joe Blow is going to be buying YSL Tuxedo. So that's the reason why. Just uh, F FYI for the ones that are thinking YSL, Cartier, what's going on? So let's get back to Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a patchouli based scent. Patchouli is very much a note for me that has been a slow go. Um, early on in my fragrance journey, even on YouTube, early on on YouTube, you're not going to hear me get excited about most patchouli based fragrances. Um, but now I'm starting to get into patchouli and the way it is blended with other notes. Um, this one really, really caught my eye. Um, these are EDP concentration and I think this may be the winner from this whole uh, luxury line from YSL. So I'm going to keep my nose on that one. At number seven is more of an oldie. Um, this is a fragrance that I've had my eye on for a while. Ever since I've been on YouTube, this one was on my to buy list. It just never got bought. Um, same thing with Green Valley um, and a lot of these green based fragrances from Creed. This one called Feuille Vette, so green leaf. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of the green scents, you know, the three headed monster from Creed that I actually own. I love all three of them. Um, they can be top five in my spring list every single year. This one was actually released back in 2006, so it's an older fragrance and one I really wanted badly when I first started on YouTube. I think my first year on YouTube, I really wanted to get Feuille Vert and I never did. Um, this one has oak moss and lime. 
Um, and those are the major players in this particular fragrance, so it's very much green. And I think this may be another winner from Creed. I've never gotten my nose on it. Um, all of these in this list I've never gotten my nose on, but this one um, I really want to get my nose on. So at number seven, Creed's Feuille Vert. At number six, we're going to go with the House of Zerjoff. Um, this one has been on my, let's say, to test or to buy list for quite a while. This is 1888. It's an amber-based scent from Zerjoff with their signature florals. Um, I've heard very good things about it. Never smelt it, actually. And I really do want to get my nose on it, so I got to sample that one. At number six. At number five, this one is Indie. Um, a City on Fire by Imaginary Authors. Um, this will be most likely my first purchase from the brand. Um, just because this has Mark written all over it. When you're saying smoke, call me because I want it bottled. <laughs> I love smoky fragrances. Uh, the more smoke, the better. Um, you're going to see a lot of my winter top lists and fall lists usually peppered with a lot of smoky based fragrances, incense, mirror, all that good stuff. Um, this is what I hear a great smoky scent. And the note breakdown of this fragrance kind of makes me want to dance a little bit. Kind of gets me excited. So I got to get my nose on this one. A city on fire. I might just blind buy it. Um, I might just split a bottle and go go with it. I think uh, Daver from the Fragrance Bros had really high praise on this particular fragrance and mentioned me. And he's like, you got to get your nose on it. So I might just split that one. At number four, it is from the House of Zegna. And um, this one called Javanese Patchouli. Now, the Zegna line, I actually tested this higher-end Zegna line um, in duty-free when I was going overseas. I remember seeing it at one airport. I don't remember where. I was in Europe somewhere. They had the whole line up, and I'm like, these seem interesting. And I remember I fell in love with like three or four of these. This line is absolutely bonkers, especially the citruses. I remember getting really interested in those citruses and this patchouli. The oud was okay. But the patchouli was the big winner, and then a couple of the citruses were really authentic and juicy. So this one, I need to get a bottle of this. I know they sell like one fluid ounces of this whole collection. Um, sometimes they're on eBay for like 60 bucks. So I think I'm just going to just bite the bullet and snatch one up uh, for 60 bucks. Uh, I can't go wrong with that. So this one, really, really good. I remember sniffing it. So this is probably one of the only ones that I actually have smelt. On uh, number four. On uh, number three... Number three, it is from the House of Slumber House. You guys know me. I love the House of Slumber House. You want to release a new uh, fragrance from the house, you're going to hear it from me, most likely. Now, this one, Zod. God damn it. This one was one that I was... I remember I was overseas, and uh, it was released, limited edition. And uh, it went like hotcakes. Sold. Sold out, like, in a few days, I think. Um, really, really quick. And I was like, shit, I missed it. Um, ever since then, I want to get a bottle of this. I might just have to blind buy. I can't get a sample anywhere, so I might have to blind buy like half a bottle or something. I'm just going to have to search eBay or something. But this one is on my to buy list this year. Slumber House Zod. The note breakdown, cherry, cranberry, plum, cacao, red wine, oak, and many more to go. Um, this is absolutely stunning. If it's exactly what I come to expect from Slumber House, it's going to be a freaking five out of five, top 20 worthy in all my lists. Um, this one's going to be great, I think. Um, it's hard to find, so any of my subscribers out there, if you're watching this, this is one uh, that I want badly. Um, so let me know if you know somebody that's selling a bottle. Now, number two, this one, I actually have a sample. I think I bought a sample. Was it Indie Scent or was it Lucky Scent? I think it was Indie Scent that I bought a sample of this. It's somewhere kicking around in this room somewhere. So I'm going to be sampling this fragrance very, very soon. It's it's in here somewhere. Um, I remember looking at this uh, bottle, this fragrance house, the note breakdown on this particular fragrance, and getting very excited. I think I got like several samples from this brand. And the brand is uh, Nishan. And this particular fragrance called Africa Olifa. Now this fragrance... This one, I think, was made for me. Castorium, Civet, and Leather are the major players in this fragrance. Oh, my God. I need to get that sampled. Somewhere in here, i got to dig around and get it. Um, enough said. This may be a future number one on my top 20 list. So 2016, 17, and 18. Um, if you want to get ahead of the curve, 
just buy this because I'm probably going to buy it and then I'm going to hype the shit out of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I think this one's going to be great. Wait for the sampling samples because it's coming out soon. I, I have a sample somewhere in here, so uh, keep it tuned in, we'll see. At number one, it is from the House of Lalique, and this is a brand new release. I just saw this uh, posted on Fragrantica two weeks ago, one week ago, 2016. Or Interperial, and this fragrance has coffee and patchouli. This is a coffee and patchouli based fragrance with tobacco as a secondary note. Um, I'm super uber excited about trying this fragrance out. Um, I think it's going to be very hard to get an actual sample or to, to purchase it, so I might have to use uh, some sort of magic to get a freaking sample of this stuff. But Lalique, um, if it's even close or remotely close to an Ancre Noir based fragrance, I'm done. This is going to be a freaking monster in the fragrance game. I can't wait. I want to get my nose on it. And I think all 10 of these, if I can get these 10 in 2016, I win. I win fragrance idol. <laughs> I'm the winner. <laughs> but uh, being serious, um, I really think, again, a lot of these I haven't smelt. But again, you can see my taste as far as this goes, right? Because this, these are fragrances that I just look at the note breakdown. I know the, you know, I know the brands. I do my research. I see what I like, and I'm pretty good at guessing at what I think would be around my, my genre. And this is what you're gonna get into when you're in this fragrance game. You're gonna start knowing what you like. And these are fragrances, you know, notes, castorium, civet, leather, bold tobacco fragrances. Um, you see, Slumber House, if they're going to release something, I know it's around what I'm going to get because I already have several bottles from the brand. I know what I'm going to get from them, things like that. So I'm, I'm already pre-guessing that I know what I'm going to love. Um, and usually I'm pretty bang on as far as uh, the excitement level and what, I'm, what I come to expect. So uh, we'll see what happens in the new year. You guys are going to hear me sample these and stuff like that. It's all on camera. This is what this channel is all about. So let me know in the comments below any of these you've smelt already. Some of these have already been released. Um, let me know if you've smelt them. Let me know what you think. You think it's going to be up my alley, most likely, hopefully. And if you own any of these and you're willing to give some up, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.